Hey guys, I hope you are all having a great week so far. Welcome to our brand new two week series called Exclusive Drop. And we're talking about identity and the truth is our identities are as customizable, unique and high quality as a piece from our favorite designer brand. So what is the relationship between our identity, our value and our values? How does that, how, how does what we value impact our identity? And if you've ever asked yourself the question, who am I really? This series is all for you. So stick around during this time. So in elementary and middle school, I chose a regrettable haircut. And what's sad to say is I stuck with it. And honestly, it was a popular haircut in my days. But when I look back, I don't think it will ever be popular again. I had a bold cut with a part right down the middle of my hair. And in fact, I didn't really work for it didn't really work for me because I have like this like super calic right here and like really curly hair and uh, this calic on my right side just kind of sticks out a lot of times so I could never get it my, my hair even the way that I needed it to be and I would have gel like I would have to gel everything so much just to get my hair to stay exactly the way that I wanted it to and in fact here's a picture of me with that haircut but on another note I was also very confused because this picture, I'm wearing a University of Washington sweatshirt. Go Huskies, that's still my team. But a year or two later, I wore a regrettable shirt for my school picture. Check this one out. Ew, no one likes Washington State. And uh, I wish I could just burn this picture, but like it's a memory that I have to remember, like school pictures, and you just kind of have that, that list of school pictures throughout your years. But not only did I have a regrettable bowl cut in middle school, I then thought it was just the best thing for me to do was just to shave my head from then on. So much regret. And maybe you can relate to that. You look at old pictures of yourself and you see different phases that you went through and you might even call them different identities that you tried on. So you had different looks at different times and maybe even different groups of friends and maybe in each phase with each group, you felt like yourself, even though all those different versions looked and felt very different from each other. And so when we look at all of those different versions of ourselves, we may even find ourselves asking this question, who am I really? And that can feel like a pretty big, maybe even overwhelming question to ask, who am I? And so when you ask that question, a whole bunch of labels come to mind. And you think of words like funny, friendly, really tall, moody, strong, feminine, athletic, quirky, entertaining, attractive, or very focused. And you think of the color of your hair or the color of your skin and and you think of the family that you come from or the place that you live and the things that you are doing or have done and maybe answering that question feels overwhelming because several things come to mind and some of them don't even seem to go together you're deeply interested in other people and an introvert who doesn't always talk uh, much in social settings or you're, you're simple when it comes to your music taste, but your style preference right now is complex and specific. And you love to play sports, but are also really into the instrument that you play in marching band. You're driven, but you love taking naps. Or let's go deeper. Isn't it overwhelming to manage several different identities across several different contexts? For example, you may be managing different identities when you're at a drama rehearsal than you do at your basketball practice or even at church or posting on TikTok versus what you post on Snapchat or Be Real or with your family than you do when you're hanging out with your friends or your teammates or your small group. All of these different contexts have you managing different identities and that's a lot to carry. And this makes answering the question, who am I really overwhelming? And isn't it true that our identities change? There's who you were in the past, who you are right now, and all the possibility of who you could be in the future. And maybe you've even heard things like, you can be whatever you want. And that message can sound really empowering, like, yes, but it also can make you wonder if I can be anything by just picking something, who am I really? Is there an unchanging version of me under all of the descriptions and labels? Do I get to pick who that is or is that something I really am and will I always be? 
And what's the difference between temporary versions of me versus the who am I really? Other ways to ask this question might sound like, can I change up parts of my identity without losing sight of the real me? Or how many labels can I change and how often before I fully lose sight of who I am at the core? Or how can I be true to my shifting interests without having an entire identity crisis and without feeling like a fake? How do I distinguish myself from everything, everyone else in a way that feels authentic to who I am? And what happens when the labels don't really fully fit who I am? And what if everyone else seems to be okay being in a certain boxes, but I don't want to commit to any of those boxes? Does my value change based on my outward identity? How can I be unique without losing sight of who I really am? All of it leads back to the big question. When the labels are gone and the expectations are gone and the pressure is gone and the freedom is gone and it's just me, who am I really? Because here's the thing, if we don't know who we are at the core, our outward identity will never feel quite right. And the way that we navigate our identity externally will never answer, who am I really? And we're going to spend a few minutes looking at three passages from the Bible to help us answer, who am I really, at the core level. And what's really cool is that each of these verses that we are going to look at come from a different style of writing. And the answer to the question of our value that we are going to start by, we're going to be starting by looking at a passage found in the book of Psalms. And this book is basically like a book of poetry. Psalm 8 is traditionally thought to be written by an ancient king of Hebrew uh, that people named David. And he wrote this in Psalm 8, 3 through 9. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you set in place, what are mere mortals that you should think about them? human beings that you should care for them. Yet you made them only a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority, the flocks and the herds and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea, and everything that swims the ocean currents. O Lord, our Lord, your majestic name fills the earth. So David is saying that the, the world is full of incredible things. All we have to do is look up to the sky to see some of them. Thousands of years after David wrote this, we can say the world is even more amazing than even he realized from what the latest space telescope can see to what the most high-powered microscope, microscope can see. It's amazing. And yet God made us as people even more wonderful, even more amazing than the most beautiful parts of creation. God's work is impressive. But God made humans the most impressive of all. And this passage from Psalm is a great starting place for us as we talk about who we really are and what that means for our identity. It begins with a sense of wonder, a sense of awe at who we are. Before we work hard to earn the label of valuable, this Psalm reminds us that just being human beings makes us an impressive piece of valuable work. So to answer the question, who are we? David says we are made with glory and honor. You are valuable to God. Now that we understand that, let's look at Genesis 1. It tells us why humans are so different. In this book, the writer talks about God creating the world and writes this in Genesis 1:27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Right there in the very first chapter of the very first book of the Bible, we see what makes humans different from the rest of creation. But even more than that, we read what grounds us, what anchors us, what starts as the first building block for who we are, God's image in us. So check out this video to help you further understand what I mean.
So to answer the question, who are we? The writer of Genesis says that we are beings who carry part of God's identity or we are image bearers. Another way to say it is that we are representatives of God. That is our starting point for answering, who am I really? And the problem is, and, and you and I know this, that we don't always live like we are image bearers of God. We sometimes act in ways or make decisions so that we stand out or fit in even when those decisions go against our identity as people made in God's image. Sometimes we do things that don't look very much like God at all. So while we are supposed to be like God, we tend to make choices that communicate something much different. And that's a problem. Because that means even though we can have God's image, we can begin to live like we don't. Like we no longer remember the answers to the question, who are we? So let's talk more about that as we look at one more verse. The last passage we'll look at today is from the New Testament book of Colossians, written after Jesus had come to earth. And this book was a letter that Paul had sent to a new group of Christians as a way to encourage them in their new faith. And Paul wrote this letter nearly 2,000 years ago, but the Colossians weren't that different from you and me. They forgot that they were image bearers. Because of that, they needed to be reminded of who they really were. And Paul tells them this in Colossians 1.15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything and was created and is supreme over all creation. So when we've tried on so many different identities that we lose sight of who we really are, we can look at Jesus who showed us what living in the image of God really looks like. We study who Jesus is and how he lived. We follow his example. We value what Jesus valued. We love like Jesus loved. We forgive like Jesus forgave and we ground our identity in who Jesus is and what Jesus did. So who are we? We are image bearers who sometimes forget who we were made to be, and so we look to Jesus to remind us. And the truth is, we can look at any number of places and find any number of labels that will tell us who we are and who we aren't. Some of them may even be true for a time, some of them make sense and some may not, some will fit well, others won't. But there is only one person who can definitely answer who you are and who you are that does not change, no matter what you do or don't. No matter what you accomplish or don't, no matter who you become or don't. What God says about you is the truest thing about you. You were made in the image of God to look like God, to show the world what God is like. And in Jesus, we have the example, and it's the perfect example of what that is. What does that mean for you? It means that you get to live out of who God made you to be. And who is that exactly? Well, God is bigger than any one of us. And so each of us gets to reflect God in our own way. Because you can express yourself uniquely while you stay true to who you really are. And who you are is an image bearer of God. How you express yourself might change, but who you really are doesn't. So the question of who am I is a big question. Trying to answer that can feel overwhelming, but what if you actually started living like you know who you are? Because the reality is that you're made in the image of God. And what if people could look at you and your life and see God because of who you are and how you live? What if you could start to look at others as image bearers and see God in them and then just, and, and not just the labels that we use? What would it look like if you started to live like you were an exclusive drop from God of the universe using you to reveal what God is actually like? That's an identity worth living in. And it's the identity that we are all invited to participate in. So let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I just pray that each and every single one of these students watching can just know that you are good and that you have called us to live our identities in you, that we are created in the image of God. And so God, I pray that any of us who have been struggling with our identity or maybe looking down upon ourselves or asking God, God, why did you create me like this? That we can trust you and know that, okay, we are value. We, we matter to God and we have a strong identity in Christ. So we love you, Jesus. Continue to grow us. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great one. Bye.